Doug Gibbs. Hold on, let me get it. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, Mr. Gibbs, you're up. You have four minutes. Okay. You now have six minutes. And I defer my time to Doug Gibbs. Michael I'm sorry, what's your name? Michael Hefter. Michael Hefter. You now have eight minutes. You give us a second just to get our paperwork in place, and then we'll. Well, Mr. Hefner, right? Yes. Okay, I got you. Is there anybody else who'd like to defer their time? All right. If we can put eight minutes on the clock. The floor is yours. Uh, good evening, board. Uh, my name is Douglas V. Gibbs. I am known online as Mr. Constitution. I have been a constitutional instructor since 2008. On January 19th, an attorney visited this board to explain his interpretation of your legal obligations regarding the mask and vaccine mandates. And I have listened to this presentation and I found that it is riddled with legal errors. As citizens, rather than subjects, the government is to serve us, not the other way around. Amendments 5 and 14 of the U.S. Constitution states, no person may be deprived of their life, liberty, or property without due process. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary it defines liberty as the state or condition of people who are able to act and speak freely and the power to do or choose what you want to. The 1828 Webster's Dictionary, which was the first American dictionary on the English language, and was actually written by Noah Webster in the hopes that it would help people better understand the U.S. Constitution, uh, defines liberty as freedom from restraint, in a general sense, and application to the body or to the will or mind. A man enjoys liberty when no physical force operates to restrain his actions or volitions. Natural liberty consists in the power acting as one thinks fit, without any restraint or control except from the laws of nature. It is a state of exemption from the control of others. Liberty, in other words, is the freedom to say no. Individual liberties may not be overridden by government dictate without the proper elements of due process present. The lawyer on January 19th said the situation at hand is about jurisdiction. He was correct. There is no federal jurisdiction due to a lack of authority expressly enumerated in the U.S. Constitution. Louis Brandeis, uh, who, who uh, was appointed to the Supreme Court of the United States in 1916, in 1890, he argued in his Harvard Law Review article that a right to privacy was inherent to, in American law. To protect Americans in their beliefs, their thoughts, their emotions, and their sensations, the makers of the Constitution conferred as against the government, the right to be let alone, the most comprehensive of rights and the right most valued by civilized men, end quote. Early in his career, Brandeis also wrote this, the most important political office is that of the private citizen. The Constitution does not begin with we the lawyers or we the judges or we the politicians. The iconic words are we the people. So therefore, the ultimate jurisdiction belongs to those who voted you into office. A governor's executive order and the Health and Safety Code of California do not supersede any and all individual liberties at any time. Mandates are connected to no legislative process. The U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 1, and the State Constitution of California, Article 4, Section 1, both state that legislative powers, which are the power to make law, modify law, and repeal law, only belong to the legislative departments of government and that those powers are vested in those bodies. Vested means the powers are irrevocable and cannot be given away or transferred for any reason. Sir William Blackstone, in his commentaries on the laws, explains that when vest is used as a legal governmental term, the possession of such a legal authority is unalienably vested. In other words, as much as people believe that Governor Newsom was given legislative authority with his mandates, According to our state constitution, he cannot be given that power by the legislature. It is for them to legislate only. Therefore, mandates have no power of law because it is illegal for the legislature to give the governor or health agencies the power to legislate. The laws of nature and of nature's God, as presented by the Declaration of Independence, the rule of law, in other words, is connected to our God-given rights, and they are self-evident. In short, just because a politician says something is lawful, does not mean that it is. 
especially when it was tyrannically put into place without proper authority in the first place and violates the rule of law. Since mandates are not law and since they violate the rule of law, not abiding by mandates is not a violation of the law nor a violation of the Constitution. Adhering to unlawful mandates may place you at risk of being prosecuted, in fact, for enforcing illegal mandates on the children of this school district. <laughs> Governor Newsom himself realizes that mandates are not law. If you listen to his speeches, he uses the word heed. You will heed these mandates. The word heed, if you look it up, means to take into consideration according to the dictionary. So even he knows it does not carry the force of law. We must also consider California Code Regulations, Title IX, Section 784.29, the informed consent to medical treatment uh, section of our, of our California regulations. In subsection C, it says, no medical treatment may be administered to a client without informed consent, except in an emergency situation as defined by Section 853, which I'll get to in a moment or circumstances otherwise authorized by law. Subsection D says the client has the right to accept or refuse the proposed treatment. That would include wearing a medical device on one's face or something called a vaccine, which may not be the proper term for it. And if he or she consents, has the right to revoke his or her consent for any reason at any time. As for that Section 853 I mentioned earlier about emergencies, Nothing in this article, this is what it says in the uh, California Code, nothing in this article is intended to prohibit the physician from taking appropriate action in an emergency. An emergency exists when there is a sudden marked change in the patient's condition so that action is immediately necessary for the preservation of the life or the, pr or the prevention of seriously, serious bodily harm to the patient or others, and it is impracticable, impra practicable to first obtain consent. In other words, based on that definition, our children are not in an emergency situation as defined by Section 853. The wearing of medical devices on their faces or, or any proposed medical procedures that include vaccinations may be denied by their guardians and or parents. As for the 1905 Jacobson v. Massachusetts case that is brought up quite a bit, uh, and the lawyer on January 19th brought it up. The information regarding the ruling was also misleading. Uh, in the case, uh, the, uh, John, John Marshall Harlan, the uh, Chief Justice of the United States, indicated that per, uh, individual liberties can be suspended in the case of uh, a, a community emergency. In his majority opinion, he also explains that the judicial opinion provided only concerned the Massachusetts state constitution. It was not for a countrywide application. The erroneous opinion must be reversed anyway, for it violates the Constitution. And we know that that can happen. Just because a judge says something, it can be reversed, it can be changed if it's erroneous. In the 2019 Gamble versus not United States case, in his judicial opinion, Justice Clarence Thomas stated, according to Blackstone, judges should disregard precedent that articulates a rule incorrectly when necessary to vindicate the old rule from misrepresentation a decision that is demonstrably erroneous. The court should correct the error, regardless of whether other factors support overruling the precedent. Besides, what a judge provides is not law. As Justice Thomas also said in Gamble versus the United States, the judiciary lacks force, in other words, the power to execute the law, and will, the power to legislate. Those powers are vested in the president and Congress, respectively. Daniel Webster was born on January 18, 1782. He died October 24, 1852, and he was an American lawyer and statesman who served in Congress and was U.S. Secretary of State under four presidents. And he said, the Constitution was made to guard the people against the dangers of good intentions. And he was correct. And finally, thank you, the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause calls for all Americans to be treated equally. So I have to ask, and this is a general question for everybody, why are masked and unmasked and the vaccinated and unvaccinated being treated differently? Are we experiencing a new form of discrimination? In the end, I ask you for one thing, board. Think critically. Recognize that 
why you, recognize why you sit there, what, where you sit, and who the true voice of America is supposed to be, we the people.